In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can solve complicated integrals using a substitution to make them less complicated. Let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look at this first example. We have uh, the integral of 6x squared times the quantity x cubed plus 5 raised to the sixth power. This certainly looks complicated. Uh, one approach is we, we could expand x cubed plus 5 to the 6th power. Uh, then we could distribute multiplying each term by 6x squared, and we have this nice long polynomial. And polynomials are fairly easy to integrate, so that would be one option, but uh, we probably don't want to do all of that work. Expanding x cubed plus 5 to the 6th power uh, is not all that easy. So instead what we're going to try to do is use substitution to make this a little bit easier. So I could make this integrand look a lot easier if I replace x cubed plus 5 with some other variable. Uh, typically we use u but feel free to use whatever you want. Just don't use x because then you're going to get really confused. Okay? So I'm going to let u take the place of x cubed plus 5. Uh, oftentimes if there's something in parentheses or underneath a radical or something like that, we might make that substitution. And when I choose my substitution, I also want to write down the derivative because we are going to use that as well. The derivative of this u would be 3x squared. And if I multiply both sides of this expression by dx, I get the expression du equals 3x squared dx. Okay? So now we're going to go back to our integral and we're going to try to rewrite this integral in terms of our new variable. Okay? So first thing to notice is this part of the expression right here is exactly what I called u raised to the sixth power. So I can replace x cubed plus 5 to the sixth power with just u to the sixth power. The next thing to notice is I have 6x squared dx in my integrand. Uh, that's related to this expression over here, 3x squared dx. In fact, it's just twice that. So if I multiply du by 2, that would give me precisely that expression that's found in my integrand. So I can replace 6x squared dx with 2 times du. Okay, and this is my new integral, and notice it's much simpler than uh, the integral I started with. Uh, the 2 is a constant, so if I want, I can move it in front of the integral. And now I simply need to find the antiderivative of u to the 6th power. So I've got 2 times the antiderivative of u to the 6th power, which would be 1 7th u to the 7th power. If I multiply that by 2, I get 2 sevenths u to the seventh power. So I have an antiderivative now. Uh, the only problem is it's not expressed using the correct variable. So now I will just substitute back in what I took out earlier. I'm going to replace the u with quantity x cubed plus 5. And because this is an indefinite integral, I'm also going to add c, and this would be my final answer. 2 sevenths x cubed plus 5 to the seventh power plus c. And as a quick check, we could find the derivative of this. If I want to find the derivative of 2 sevenths x cubed plus 5 to the seventh power plus c, we would take 7 times 2 sevenths. That would be 2 times x cubed plus 5 to the sixth power and then I multiply by the derivative of x cubed plus 5, which is 3x squared, and then the derivative of the constant is 0, and if you look at that, that's the same as 6x squared times x cubed plus 5 to the 6th power, which is exactly what we started with. Okay, So that's our first look at using a substitution. Uh, the key thing to recognize is we started with a very complicated integral, and using our substitution we made it a very simple integral. Okay, that's kind of the point. So let's look at a second example here. I have the integral of x times e raised to the power x squared plus 9 dx. Okay, 
So again, I'm going to let you be sort of the overly complicated part of my integrand. I'm going to replace x squared plus 9 with u. The derivative of x squared plus 9 is 2x. So I know that du is equivalent to 2x dx. Okay. Now I'm going to apply the substitution to my integral. Uh, the first thing to notice is I have e to the power x squared plus 9. Based on my substitution, that should become e to the power u. My integrand also contains x dx. x dx happens to be right here. So what could I replace? So what could I replace x dx with? Well, if I multiply both sides of this equation by half, that would give me precisely x dx. Okay? So in my original integral, that x dx is going to be replaced with half du. And notice my complicated integral now looks a lot less complicated. Again, that one half is a constant, so I can move it to the front of my integral if I like. Then I'm going to take the antiderivative. The antiderivative of e to the power u is just e to the power u. And then I'm going to replace my u with the original expression, which was x squared plus 9. So my final answer is 1 half e to the power x squared plus 9 plus c. Okay, so again, through substitution, we took a complicated integral and we made it a lot less complicated. Once we, are, once we have our antiderivative, always remember to go back and replace your new variable with the original expression. All right, let's look at a third example. This example is a definite integral. I have the integral from negative 2 to 3, x times the quantity x squared minus 4 raised to the fourth power. Remember, a definite integral, our answer should be a number. Similar to the first example, I'm going to let u be this expression in parentheses. I want to make that expression simpler, so I'm going to replace x squared minus 4 with u. Then I need the derivative. The derivative would be 2x, which means du is the same as 2x dx. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite my integral. So again, the, the complicated part of the integrand is now going to become u to the fourth power. We made that much less complicated. I also have x dx in my integrand, which happens to be right over here. So similar to the second example, I can replace x dx with half du, because if I multiply both sides of this equation by half, I get exactly x dx, which is what I find in my integrand. So I'm going to replace x dx with half du, similarly to how I did in the previous example. Now, this was a definite integral. Negative 2 and 3 are x values. Okay? My integral is no longer written in variable x, so it is not appropriate for me to use uh, the same limits of integration. These numbers need to be converted to u values if I'm going to integrate with respect to u. Okay? Lucky for me, I have a converter here. I can use this equation to convert all x values to u values. Okay, So if x is negative 2, according to this equation, u is going to be negative 2 squared minus 4, which is 0. So my lower limit of integration is going to be 0. And if x equals 3, u is going to be 3 squared minus 4, which is 5. So my upper limit of integration becomes 5. Anytime you use a substitution, you have to make sure you rewrite every single part of the integral, and that includes the limits of integration. Okay, We are going to complete this integral using variable u, which means our limits of integration have to be u values. This is the same as 1 half times the integral from 0 to 5 of u to the fourth power. I'm going to take the antiderivative which is 1 fifth u to the fifth power. So that gives me 1 tenth 
u to the fifth power. And in the previous two examples, I then resubstituted back my original expression, x squared minus 4. But because this is a definite integral, there is really not any good reason for me to do that, because I have upper and lower limits that are values of u. So I am just going to plug those in now and use the fundamental theorem, which says I evaluate the antiderivative at the upper and lower limits of integration and subtract. So what I'm going to have is 1 tenth times 5 to the fifth power minus 1 tenth 0 to the fifth power. And 1 tenth 5 to the fifth power is 3125 over 10 which is 312 and a half. And that's going to be my solution here. Okay. So really important, if you're doing a definite integral, make sure when you make a substitution to also replace your upper and lower limits of integration, convert them to the new variable, and once you find your antiderivative, you're going to go ahead and evaluate that antiderivative at your new limits of integration. There is no reason for us to go back to that original expression. So just remember, we're never going to go back to x, okay? You broke up with your x for a reason. Uh, there's no good reason for you to get back with your x. That's a joke. It's not a very good one, uh, but it works. And let's just try one final example. Here we have another definite integral, the integral from 0 to 2, and we're integrating x squared over x cubed plus 1. This is a rational expression. Uh, because it's a rational expression, you do want to check for discontinuities. Okay, We do have a discontinuity at negative 1 here, but notice that negative 1 is not in the interval from 0 to 2, which means we're okay. Okay. Now, a lot of times with rational expressions, we might be able to simplify them and compute our integral using a simplified form, but oftentimes there is no good re way to simplify them, and this would be one of those times. I don't really have a good way to simplify x squared over x cubed plus 1, so we might start to think about a substitution. What substitution should we make? Well, uh, we have a numerator and denominator. The denominator is more complicated. So let's do a substitution for the part that's more complicated. Okay? So I'm going to let u be the more complicated part, which is the denominator. The derivative of this is 3x squared. So du is 3x squared dx. Okay? So now let's try to rewrite this integral. My denominator is u, okay, because I chose to replace x cubed plus 1 with u. And I also have x squared dx in my integrand, which happens to be right here. x squared dx is equal to what? Well, if I multiply both sides of this equation by 1 third, I can see that x squared dx is equivalent to 1 third du. So in my integral, I can replace x squared dx with one-third du. Okay? And don't forget, just like in the previous example, we also need to change our limits of integration. If x equals zero, I'm going to use this equation right here. And if I plug in zero, it looks like u is going to be one. So my lower limit of integration is now going to be one. And if x equals 2, and I use this equation, u is going to be 2 cubed plus 1, which is 9. So I'm no longer integrating from 0 to 2. I'm now integrating from 1 to 9. 1 third is a constant, so I can worry about it later. And if I do that, I'm left with uh, the integral of 1 over u. The antiderivative of 1 over u is natural log of u, and I am going to evaluate this at u equal 9 and u equal 1. Okay, If I plug in 9, I get 1 third natural log of 9. If I plug in 1, I get 1 third natural log of 1. Hopefully you remember that natural log of 1 is 0, so my final answer is 1 third natural log of 9, or approximately uh, 732 thousandths. Okay. 
So that's the second example of a definite integral using substitution. And just to give you sort of a, a graphical idea, uh, this integral we were asked to integrate from 0 to 2 x squared over x cubed plus 1 dx. Remember when we do a definite integral that represents uh, the area between the x-axis and the curve. So in this first graph the shaded region, this shaded region right here is what we're asked to find with our definite integral. But because that was too complicated for us to find the antiderivative of, I made a substitution. When I made the substitution, my integrand became one-third times one over u, which is one over three u, and my limits of integration changed from one to nine. That gives me a new region shaded in red over here. Those regions don't look exactly the same, but it turns out that these regions have the same area. Okay, and the region on the left looks like it might be bigger because it's, it's certainly got more height, but we're only integrating from 0 to 2. In our second version uh, of the integral, we're integrating from 1 all the way out to 10. So even though it looks like a slimmer region, uh, we do have uh, a longer interval to deal with. And it might not be obvious looking at the pictures, but those two uh, red shaded regions do have the same area. Well, I think that is a good start. Hopefully you found this helpful.